All right, so welcome back to a new video on this channel about Bit Bitwick. And on this one, we need to talk about the difference between audio events and clips. Now, if you like all of this, like and subscribe. And if you want to buy me a coffee, you can. All you have all the links at the description. Now, all DAWs have their own ways, uh, you know, to work with the uh, files or audio files. And all of this is just going to be about audio files. Now, Bitwick uses a very special way, which I think it should be a uh, standard. But, you know, that's just my opinion. So when we work with audio files, Bitwick will create a container where all the files are going to live. Now, this container can be manipulated. For instance, we could have one container with multiple files inside. Now, let me just show you how this works. OK, so right here, I have a lot of snares. Right, I have a snare. So I'm going to grab a sound, just a file, an audio file, and I'm just going to toss it right here. So now we have an audio file, and what you can see is this long. Now, if I click it right there, we are going to be getting on the inspector right here a lot of information about whatever we are selecting. And you have two main parts. Right there at the top, it says Arranger Clip. But then if you go at the bottom, it says Audio Event. So now we can see that we have two separate sections and both sections are going to be doing very specific things because they are different things. They are related, but they are different things. And just to give you a very dumb uh, example, let's say I want to rename this file, right? So if I go right there, I'm going to be calling this, I don't know, unicorn, something like that, something, you know, something very descriptive. So this snare is going to be my unicorn snare. And I, you know, we might think that we are changing the name of the file, but we are not changing the name of the file. The only thing we are changing is the name of the arranger clip. We are just changing the name of the clip. So if I go right there and just double click this, it's going to bring me the edit view and it's going to be, you know, this one right here, when you go right there, it's going to say show detail editor panel. So yeah, it's going to double click and it's going to show you that one. Now, right there is going to stand you on the track or the clip view. We're going to talk about this in a minute. Now, for instance, right now, I'm going to go to the clip view. Now, the clip view, notice that it doesn't say unicorn. It's just going to be saying snare and 21, which is the name of the clip. So behind the scenes, you're not changing the name or the name of the file. You're just changing the name of the clip. Now, this means that you can have a lot of all the things living under the same roof. Let's say you have a container, this clip, and inside the clip, you might host different files. Because again, remember, this one is a container. It can contain a lot of different files. And let me just give you just a quick demonstration. I'm maybe going to go right here and just make this file a little bit shorter, right? And as we do so, we can see that we are changing this audio event, and this is the audio event, and we are changing whatever is inside the clip, but the clip is not changing. Now, what if I go maybe to a kick, and you know, just, just select the kick, whatever, it doesn't matter, I'm just gonna toss it inside here. So now we have two audio events living under the same clip. Now, if I go right there at the top, we can make the clip longer right there at the top. We can, we're going to be talking about this one. This, is, this one is a loop function. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit erratic. In this case, uh, if we go at the top and we uh, drag, um, you know, we make it uh, larger, or we make it uh, shorter, we're just going to be adjusting the length of this. But what we can do, since now we have two different uh, audio events, we can adjust this and just create something new out of the same thing, right? So I'm going to be adjusting this, and this one is going to be the end of the uh, actual clip. So I can just make it shorter, and now we have something new. So maybe I'm going to be selecting this first clip. I'm going to go to event right here. I'm not going to use shortcuts so you can visually, you know, can see everything that we are doing. I'm going to reverse it. So now we have a reverse snare and we have a different clip inside uh, audio event, sorry, inside the same clip. Now, if I go right there at the top and I select the, the unicorn, the unicorn clip, it's telling me, dude, you have a, you're standing on the arranger clip and right there at the bottom is telling you within this clip, you have two audio events living under the same clip. Now, if you think about this, let me just put this right here. This is a fantastic little thing uh, because it just makes your life easier. I just can grab this uh, clip and I know that this one hosts a lot of files. 
So I don't need to select all the files and just, you know, uh, go to your uh, session, your range and just duplicate them. I just can, you know, select one thing and just work with this thing, maybe duplicate it. Maybe I just want to chop it and I'm going to be chopping it, move it around and I don't need to select multiple files. I can even go right there, do alt and stretch the thing. You know, I can do all of this on a very simple fashion. That's why I'm telling you uh, this should be a standard for all, you know, all DOS. Now on other DAWs, just to give you a demonstration, what you need to do, and it's not just on, you know, it's most DAWs. What you need to do, and if I want to build something like this, I need to go right there, bring this file. So let me just bring another sound. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. I'm just going to bring something. So that's fine. I'm just going to bring that one. It looks very weird, but that's okay. Right, I believe this one is fine. So we have three different files, right? So what we want to do, we want to make a combination of all the files. So on all the DAWs, what we need to do, we need to go here, just adjust the thing, then maybe go right there and uh, maybe just make this one smaller like that. I can go right here and maybe just make this one a little bit smaller. Just, you know, we need to work the files this fashion, right? And maybe we are going to be getting to a good port and do something like that. Maybe go there and just apply it to fades. Why not? And we need to do something like this, right? And then maybe we just get something really cool. Now, the thing is that right here, you have three separate things and this is on all the DOS. So what if I want to loop this? I cannot do it. This is just gonna be doing it on the last clip. So I'm gonna need to bounce all of this so I can work with the whole thing as whole. And if I want to duplicate this, I need to go make sure that I select everything and then just uh, duplicate the uh, whole thing, which is sometimes it's just, you know, it sucks. So if you ask me, I much prefer to do all this instead of doing all of this, all right? So let me just delete this. I'm gonna be kaboom and going back to our unicorn file. And I'm going to close all of this and stand right here. Now, the fact that you have a container right now, a single thing right here, it doesn't, ma it doesn't mean that you lose the information that you have inside. So when you double click it, you have two main views, the clip view and you have the track view. Now, right here, when you double click, if you're standing on the clip view, you're going to see the information that lives inside the container. Now, we notice if I make the container short, this doesn't mean that you lose the clips that you have inside. You don't lose the information. You're just making the container a little bit shorter. But all the information that it's outside the container, all the audio clip, right? It's there. You don't lose it. So again, you know, it's just a fantastic little thing. So right here, you have some options. We are not going to cover this in this video because it's just going to be super long. These are called expressions. And then, of course, we have the comping. Now, we are going to be talking about the expressions and stretching on different videos. I'm going to be releasing in a couple of days. Uh, we're going to talk about this later. Now, when you're standing on the clip side, you can see the name of your clip right here. Now, all of this is just sometimes a little bit, a little bit confusing because you have now clips and you have audio events. So whenever you go to the clip, you're going to be working on this clip. And then inside you have the audio events, which are going to be, again, this ones. But then, uh, notice that it says audio events. Then you go to the track. Now you have a different thing, right? You have clips, then you have audio events, but you have a track. And it's giving you right here the name of the file, especially when you select it. And this is the name of the track. Is that, you know, maybe I can go right there and change the track to, I don't know, uh, drums, doesn't matter. But this is just the name of the track and this one is the name of the clip. So, and this is important to know because when you double click and you stand on the clip, you get a view of whatever is that you're doing inside that clip. For instance, I'm going to bring a shaker, maybe put it right there and it's just super long shaker. Damn, uh, let me just put it right there and maybe, I don't know, uh, a kick, why not? Just a kick. Uh, I'm going to be putting this one. So now on the same channel, on the same track, we do have several things. Now on the clip view, you're just going to be working with whatever it is that you selected. If I make the timeline super short, let me just close this. We just don't get all the other files, just we just don't get them. And that's why you get the clip view. So you can work with whatever it's inside that clip without being, you know, getting distracted by the other things that you have on your track. If I select the shaker, now you're working with the shaker and nothing else. Same thing with the kick. 
Now you're working with the kick and nothing, nothing else. Now, what if you do want to work with all the other things that you have on the timeline? Well, that's going to be the track. So when you go to the track, you can select clips. Now we know what clips are. And then you have the audio events inside the clips. But now we have an overall view of all the things that you have on the track. And right here, you can still, you know, work or do pretty much the same things that you do right here. You just can go here, apply some fades. We can just do it right here. But now you're doing on a track or clip level more than, you know, um, a clip level. So let me just go back on this one. So when we go to track, you can go to clips and notice that the, the name of the events are just, you know, going off and they just go out. We don't get them. And it's because right now you're going to be working with the actual clip and not the audio events that we have inside. Now, if you select audio events within the track view, you can work with your audio events like applying some fades and maybe making this one shorter. And again, the fact that we make it shorter doesn't mean that the container is just shorter, but you can still, you know, uh, do the same things you do on clip when you go to audio events. So the main difference is that you have two ways of working. Maybe you just want to work in this file. You go and do your magic right here, or maybe you want to try work in an overall view and work, still work on the audio events that you have inside the clip and just, you know, do your magic. And right here, it's all up to you. You can create or you can do very creative things. Maybe I want to grab this shaker. I'm going to be putting it right here. I'm going to be deleting this file. And maybe again, I'm going to just make this one bigger. Let me just make this. And I'm working on the track view right now because I want access to the other clips. Now, if I make this one longer, this clip is just going to be longer. Uh, this, uh, yeah, this clip. I'm going to make the audio event a little bit shorter, something like that. I'm going to grab my shaker and just put it right here. And now this shaker belongs or it's just part of the unicorn clip. And I can just safely go to my drums uh, clip and just delete it. Same thing with the kick. I can bring the kick and put it right there. So now we have a single, a single clip with a lot of things inside. And now we can, again, just get a little bit creative. Maybe I want to go this one and reverse it. Maybe I'm going to be going right here, just making this shorter. And you just need to work your magic right here. You know, use your imagination, just create different clips, different sounds with different things inside. And it's going to be all up to you. So maybe I'm going to be applying some fades right here, some fades right here. And again, you just can do, you need to do a lot of experimentation right here. And if I play, it's going to sound super weird. But yeah, once you do this, now you have access to this, so you can save this as a clip within Vidwick, or you just can, you know, save it or bounce it or do whatever the F you want with this and then reuse it. And you don't have to toss a lot of different files and then just, you know, copy all of them and paste them all over the place. You just work with one single clip and inside the clip you have multiple events and you can alter them as much as you want. And if you desire, once you have something like this and you want to maybe duplicate it, you just can create different versions of this. And it's just going to be a different clip. This one is going to be the unicorn and I can rename it and it's going to be unicorn 2. So now you have a completely different clip with the same files, but maybe it's just going to be a little bit different, just a different ver version of the same little thing. And this is my opinion on some other DOS. We just don't get this behavior. We just get the good old, uh, you know, uh, old fashioned toss the file and work it on the on the timeline. Uh, on this one, we get this, which is very specific and really, really useful. And I wish all the DOS uh, adopt this way of working with audio files. Now, there is still a whole universe to explore because we have the expressions. We can uh, talk about the stretch and onsets. You know, we can just slice different things and just uh, work the different files. So there's a million things we need to talk about. Same thing if we go right here, if we go to the arranger clip, we can do some things that we cannot do with the audio events. And same thing in backwards. The audio events, we can do some things that we cannot do with the arranger clip uh, because they are different things, right? So we're going to be discussing all of this on the upcoming B on the upcoming videos. I'm going to be talking about the position, uh, the clip offsets, the looping, the fading and all the things that you see right here. So this video was a uh, pretty much uh, just to make sure that you understand the difference between an arranger clip, just a clip and the audio events that we have inside. And then you have, you know, different ways of working the working the different clips. I just wanted to make sure and make a dedicated video to make sure you understand this because it's essential. 
All right, so if you like all of this, remember to like and subscribe. And uh, if you want to buy me a coffee just to say thanks, you can go to the links at the description. You have uh, PayPal, you have uh, YouTube thanks or Google thanks. I believe it's YouTube thanks. And you have Patreon. So if you want to be a one month patron and maybe just buy me coffee, you can. All right, so see you on the next one.